Well, joining us now is In Focus Health correspondent Lino Madu. What do you have for us today, Lino? Well, today we will talk about a very sensitive issue. Every year on February 6th, the world commemorates the International Day of Zero Tolerance to Female Genital Mutilation, or FGM, also called female circumcision. According to the United Nations, 8,000 girls are subjected to female genital cutting every day, and more than 2,000 girls die every day after the procedure from shock, infection, and blood poisoning. Our guest today, a victim of FGM, has made it her mission to fight for the end of the practice. Here is an excerpt from Desert Flower, the movie that tells her story. We're always looking for new faces. Take my card, please. Why do we want to be a model then? Being model is better than being cleaning lady. <laughs> Can you walk? Yes, I walk a long way to Mogadishu. No, that's hideous, hideous, hideous. Take them off. And Waris Dirie, a native of Somalia, is an internationally renowned supermodel, actress, activist, and founder of the Desert Flower Foundation. She joins us today via phone from Gdansk, Poland. Waris Dirie, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us. Listen, you, were, uh, you <coughs> underwent FGM at the age of five. Fast forward several years, you become an internationally renowned supermodel. And then you decided to come out with the fact that you underwent FGM. Why did you decide to share your story? Well, my friend, this is uh, there's, there's something that I could not, number one, tolerate, knowing that the problem uh, so very well myself, personally. And I knew there's a crime really against a woman, and this crime was absolutely undercover, and that it in order to end this crime, um, it, it, somebody has to speak. And I, I knew there was, I'm sure, some people here and there trying to do something, but I just felt um, this was a mission of that for, from the day one that I can remember of my mutilation, that I one day, if I survive through this, I will come and do something about this. And I kept that promise, and uh, when I reached my really height of my modeling, I knew that, you know, this, this is the right time, and I, I had to go after this crime, and, you know, somebody had to do something. So I, I, I had no choice, and, you know, this is really, it happens to a little girls when they are so fragile and young and innocent and have no idea in any way or form to how to defend themselves. and. So this was something that really truly in my heart and soul, and I, I could course. not rest. Of course. Yeah. Now, we, uh, I understand that the little girl, Safa, who played you in the movie, has not been cut because you were able to convince her family not to do so. Tell us how you, were, how you succeeded. Well, <laughs> it wasn't easy, and it's still not easy because she's uh, still seven years old, and it can happen any time. Uh, she, I convinced them because I told them that I will, I, I promised to look after her until she's 18, financially, educationally, and in every way. And not only her, but her and her family, that I will feed them every, every, every day they will have a good food. The, the little girl have to go to school, in, in, in private school in the capital of Mogadishu, and that, 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 that no one will ever, that was the promise that you will not touch this little girl. And uh, they, they, they really kept that promise. And uh, it's not easy for them because she's the only little girl who's not mutilated in the whole village. And it's not easy for the family and, and the little girl either. But this is the beginning of something new that they have to know, hey, you know, you don't need to mut be mutilated to be accepted. Now, one of so your plans... a big part for me in this little girl. One of your plans is to open an orphanage in Kalkayo, Somalia, where you were born. Tell us about that. Why is it important to you? Well, it's, it's, it's deeply important to me because it's where I grew up and there is where everything of my existence happened. And it's a great significant for me to, to have a school for orphanage in this place. And, uh, 
again, you know, cycle, full cycle for me. It's a cycle of, of, of where I left and what I left behind to back again and re, rebuild and re-educate. So this is the number one mission in my life. For, and I, I, and I, I really do need help from, from the world to, open, to have this school. And it's urgently now I need to open this school. Okay, great. Ms. Dirio, thank you so much for joining us and all the luck for your work. Thank you. And uh, that's our Africa Health Network report for today. For more health news and developments, be sure to visit our website, africahealthnetwork.com. Back to you guys.